hey, when I do videos comparing cartridges, I will inevitably get a response from someone saying, the seven millimeter is the best. It shoots the farthest, it shoots the flattest, it's deadly. Well, maybe, but which one are we talking about? One of our Patreon members suggested covering the seven millimeter. And I said, which one? Because there are so many and this isn't even all of them. So I want to thank this patron for suggesting the seven millimeter because it is a rich field and we're about to mine it. The seven millimeter cartridges really cover the waterfront. Let's take a closer look. So the seven millimeter is a little bit confusing to shooters because we have 28s and 284s and 280s and they're all the same thing. Obviously, one's a metric and one's imperial on your measurements. So, what it is, is the bore size is 0.28 inches in diameter. That's land to land. Well, when they cut rifling grooves in it, it gets deeper. And then it becomes a 284. So, all the 7 millimeters or the 28s or the 280s or the 284s, whatever they're called, they're all going to shoot bullets that are 0.28 four in diameter. That's what you're shooting, 28s. But the seven millimeter sounds a lot cooler these days. So a lot of seven millimeters, all the same thing. But here's the crazy thing. None of them are actually seven millimeters. I mean, if you do the translating from the seven millimeter into the imperial system, seven millimeter comes out to measure at 0.27559. Nobody calls anything that. And the bullet diameter, 284, actually comes out to be 7.21 millimeters. And I've always thought if they can call the 308 Winchester a 7.62, which is accurate, why don't they call the 7s a 7.21? I don't know, but they don't do it. But don't worry about it. Just remember that all the 7 millimeters, all the 28s, the 284s, that's all the same thing. A 28 caliber bore, and they're shooting those 0.284 diameter bullets. Now... As you can see, we have a lot of them here. And the first one that everyone started with was the 757 Mauser. 1892 is when Peter Mauser put this thing out. And it is a world beater. This was used by Caramojo Bell in Africa in the turn of the 19th century for elephant hunting. He was an ivory hunter. And he took something like 800 elephants with that little cartridge. I mean, that's crazy. It's, it's way down here at the start of this line because I've roughly set these up by their power levels. So you can see this guy is not exactly up here at the top. It's pretty weak. Probably shooting a 150 grain bullet about 2,800 feet per second at the most, maybe 27. And he was shooting them a lot slower. But it just goes to show you the potential. A good shot with a good bullet, you don't need a monstrous elephant gun to take elephants. But he was a heck of a shot, and he took brain shots with solid bullets. But we are hunting deer and elk and moose, and all of these sevens could probably qualify and have over the years. But let's just start down here at the bottom of the heap with this little stubby guy. This is a 7 millimeter Remington BR bench rest, and it was designed as a short little cartridge for some special bench rest competitions. And they were using those in handguns a lot back in, I think the 1990s. Didn't really go anywhere. They necked up a seven millimeter BR to make it. Uh, and it's really not even marketed anymore. So then we start with this guy, which is also fading fast if it's even out there. That's the 730 Waters. This gentleman named Waters thought he could improve the 3030 by making it a 7 millimeter, gets the BC of the bullet a little bit higher, and he made it a 7 millimeter. So it's essentially the 3030 neck down to 7 millimeters. Not very many people shoot that. And that's pretty much always put in a lever action. I don't know if anyone even chambers for it anymore. So then we've got our Mauser, still a great cartridge. The only minus on this thing is that they've got it at a fairly low pressure level because it was so old. The rifles back in those days couldn't take the kinds of pressures they do now. So your factory loads are going to be loaded down quite a bit. And that's why the 7mm 08 Remington, which as you can see is a shorter cartridge, has less powder capacity, but it will match the ballistics or exceed them because it shoots at a higher pressure rate. So both of those are great 
white tail cartridges. And they can be used successfully for elk and moose and a lot of African game. I've shot it a fair amount in Africa and so has my wife. On one trip over there, she was shooting this and she took Kudu and Gemsbuck one shot each, big bulls. And she dropped them with one shot each with a little seven millimeter 08. And those of course were chest shots, not brain shots. So don't think that that can't handle an elk or a moose. But for white tails, man, it's got mild recoil. And of course you can shoot a lot of different bullets in there. Shoot a lighter bullet to reduce your recoil for young folks. Small frame shooters, great. But if you wanna increase the punch, just get a bigger bullet on it. So then we jump up to that 284 Winchester. I really like that cartridge. It is, I think, kind of a forgotten cartridge, but Mel Forbes put it in his initial ultralight rifle. Ultralight arms, this thing weighs just under five pounds before the scope's on it. And he tailored it for that 284 as a sheep rifle. And it has worked extremely well for that. And I've used this thing for for sheep and elk and deer and just all sorts of things with that 284. But you don't see a lot of the 284 anymore. Uh, not many people load for it. If you're a hand loader, great round to work with. But if not, you'll do better with some of these others. You can come awfully close to the same performance with that seven millimeter 08, probably within 50 or 100 feet per second. Then we jump up to a seven by six four. You could call this guy the European version of the 280 Remington, but the 280 Remington is actually a version of that because this one was out before the 280 Remington. Remington is pretty late to the party with this one. And that is the 30-06, neck down to 28. They lengthened it a little bit so you couldn't squeeze them into the 30-06 chamber. But basically that's you know, 270, 280, 30-06, right in there, same bunch. Then we've got the new one that everybody likes. And I think this is what our Patreon member was referring to when he asked me to cover the sevens. I think he said something about the Ackley Improved, the AI. That was kind of a wildcat for a long time. As you can see, you've got your 280. If you push that forward, sh uh, the shoulder forward a little bit and sharpen it to 40 degrees and got real straight sidewalls, that is an Ackley Improved cartridge. And people will just kept uh, custom building rifles for that and hand loading it until finally someone decided that they were going to make it an official Sammy spec cartridge. So now you can buy ammunition. I know Nosler builds some. I think we got a box right there. Yeah, Nosler's loading it. Um, there are several others. You're seeing more and more rifles chambered for it. Kimber's got some out, shoot really well. So that's about optimal in that 30-06 diameter cartridge size right there. Then we drop down to our short fats. And this started about the year 2000. This was Remington's Short Action Ultra Magnum. Great little cartridge, didn't do real well in its original configuration, but boy, the Wildcatters like to neck that thing down and even up and create all sorts of things. But as a seven millimeter, it's hanging right in there with that AI in a shorter package, if you like a short fat cartridge. Then if you want a little more velocity, you step up to Winchester's version, which is just a little bit longer. These will both fit short actions, but uh, that one's probably gonna add another 50 to maybe 100 feet per second more velocity. And then we've got the ultimate, I think, the well-known Remington Magnum, seven millimeter Remington Magnum. And I think this is the cartridge that most commenters are referencing when they say the seven millimeter is the flattest shooting, hardest hitting, longest range, wonderful cartridge in the world. And some of them will say it's got great BCs. Now, there's a little confusion going on with that statement because of course, ballistic coefficient BC refers to the bullet, not the cartridge. And so I think some people get that confused and they think, well, they've heard that the seven millimeter Remington has high BCs, meaning it can shoot some pretty long bullets. It'll stabilize them. The rifling twist in the uh, sevens is usually a one in 10 or one in nine, and that will stabilize some pretty long bullets. And usually those are going to be weighing 175 grains and now even up to some 180s. And I think we're even getting some 190s, but you've got to increase your twist rate for that kind of stuff. But this seven is the one that really, other than that Mauser, 
put the sevens on the map starting in the 1962 when it came out. And it has proven itself around the world for just about everything. Now, some people will complain that it's got a belt on the cartridge. Well, I have never found belts to be a problem, but some people just don't like them. They think they don't feed well. I've never had any feeding issues with it. I think it's still one of the finest all-around cartridges in the world. So don't snub the 7mm Remington Magnum. And uh, this guy, most of us haven't heard about it, popped up about, I don't know, six, eight years ago. It's called the 7mm Long Range Magnum. And it was created by the guys at Gunworks. They were looking for the ultimate short action cartridge, but they decided they'd go with a 30 out sixth length action, push the shoulder back a little bit so they could put those really long high BC bullets on it. Because the Gunworks guys are all about long range precision and really reaching out there. So they want to be handling those 175, 180 grain bullets or even longer. And that's what they specifically built that for. But it seems to have faded away. I don't hear much about it anymore, but it's a great cartridge. Now we've got one that looks real similar to the 7mm Remington Magnum, and it's actually a precursor to it. This one came out first, and that's Weatherby's belted Magnum version of it, the 7. 7 Weatherby Magnum. Now, let's just move this long-range Magnum out of the picture for a bit, put these two side by side, and you can see how closely those two look. I mean, gee, you've got the double Venturi shoulder on this Weatherby, and that was kind of a gimmick. Uh, he started doing that instead of a sharp edged shoulder, it rounds off and then it rounds off again when it comes into the neck. It doesn't really contribute much of anything other than a look, but it's still a great cartridge. And those two will be within 50 feet per second of one another. I think it's pretty much tied to the runner on that one. Then we've got another maximized belted cartridge. Same central cartridge as these two, but instead of shortening it down to that 30 out 6 length, they left it up at that full 375 H&H, &H, 300 H&H &H Magnum length cartridge. You don't see a lot of those because the shorter ones that fit the shorter actions that not really a short action, but the long action is the 30 out 6 length action. The Magnum action is even longer. And that's what this one would fit. This is the S TW, Shooting Times Westerner. And that adds a lot of horsepower, as you can see, because it's got a more powder volume in it. And then we go to kind of the king of the hill. Fairly recent cartridge. You know, it's getting to be about 20 years old now. But that is Remington's Ultra Magnum. 7 millimeter Ultra Magnum. And they're not kidding. You look at the size of that thing. It's based off the 404 Jeffrey case. Great big fat thing. And it's got no belt on it, so a lot of people like that. If you don't mind a really long cartridge, it works great, and it cranks out. I'll bet with a 150-grain bullet, you're probably pushing 30, 350 feet per second. You might even hit 3,400 feet per second, depending on your barrel length. And then finally, we've got the 28 Nosler. And it's quite similar to this rum. They've got that same 404 Jeffries fat cartridge right there. But they've got that shoulder sitting back till you've got your 30 at six length cartridge. So it's going to fit a few more actions that this one probably wouldn't. And this could be a little more compact. Now, they are claiming 3,400 feet per second with a 150 grain bullet on that one. You should be able to get it, uh, but I think it'll take a 20, 28 inch barrel. 26 might make it. But that's kind of a current family. If you take this guy out, for really not being loaded anymore, you could find rifles chambered for most of these. Which one are you going to pick? I don't think you can go wrong with any of them. Obviously, the smaller ones are not going to recoil as much, and they're not going to eat out your bores from throat erosion, from all that powder burning. So if you're looking for an all-round rifle, mostly for whitetail hunting, occasionally elk, and the ability to take bigger stuff, consider some of those smaller ones. I would say the easiest one to find ammunition for and rifles chambered for is that 7mm 08 Remington. It's based off the 308 and it actually shoots flatter and farther and drifts less than the 308, pushing the same weight bullets. Uh, the 284 is a specialty cartridge. I love it. Hand loaders love it, but you've got to do a little extra work with that one. And then the 7x64, well, it's great in Europe, but you're not going to find 
very many cartridges over here loaded with different bullets for that one. It sort of limits your options. The 280 Remington really should be more popular than it is. But because it's not, for whatever reason, you don't find a lot of variety in factory ammunition on that one either. And now the 280 AI, you would think, would really be an oddball, but because it's become popular right now, that might be my recommendation for a standard length action, 30-06 action size, and in a seven millimeter, if you want your maximum velocities without a lot of extra powder and recoil, kind of right in the middle of the pack, that one will be hard to beat. But if you want to equal it with a short action, either one of these will do. The WSM or the SOM, those are great fat short cartridges if that's your favorite. If you like those short fats, those are the two to look at. Still can't beat that 7mm, as I've said before. The Remington Magnum is kind of the standard, and I don't have any problem with it. But with today's long bullets, it's really better than it ever was. And the new powders help quite a bit. But remember, anytime someone says, well, with today's new powders and bullets, this one or that one's better than the other ones. No, they can all use the same powders and the same bullets. So it really just evens out. But it does make any one of them potentially better than they've ever, ever been in history. Once you're up into that 7 rem mag range, though, you're starting to talk overbore. So you're concerned a little bit about burning the throat out. In a hunting rifle, I sure wouldn't worry about it. I would say you're looking at least 1,500 rounds through that barrel before you start to see any fall off in accuracy. And even then, that fall off might not matter in a big game rifle, maybe for target shooting, but not that. But you get up into these big burners, the STW, the RUM, and the 28 Nosder, you've got some serious throat burning issues going on there. But as I always say, if you wanna play the game, you gotta pay the piper. And if you wanna go that fast, 3,400 feet per second or so, with a seven millimeter, yeah, you're gonna to have to uh, burn some powder. Now, the other thing to consider are longer bullets. I've been talking velocities with a 150 grain bullet on these just because it's kind of in the middle of the pack. And some of these smaller ones won't handle much more than that very effectively. Um, so with the bigger ones, you're going to want to take advantage of all that powder by putting a bigger bullet on there. What do you get out of that? Well, you get a higher BC bullet, potentially, and that means less wind deflection. And we will look at some charts, of course, we always do. This is one I'm going to flash up for you several times in this video just to give you an idea of the relative velocities of all these cartridges we're talking about. And then we're going to look at some ballistic tables here in a little bit. But before we go there, even though we're looking at a lot of different cartridges here, here are some more that aren't even on this pile. So you've got proprietary cartridges. You've got cartridges that are now obsolete. These are all 7 millimeters. And on the back side, you've got the European and the British ones. I've got one European cartridge in here, that 7x64, but here are a few more. Some of them are still out there, still extant. Others are obsolete. But the 7 has obviously been a popular diameter in bullets for a long, long time. So to the tail of the tape. I've got some charts here, ballistic calculations are all done. And what we're going to do is compare the 7mm 08 as a low end with the 7 rem magnum, which is kind of in the middle. And then the top end will give it to the 28 Nosler. And you can follow along on the screen as we read some of these numbers. Now, I have zeroed each of these for their maximum point blank range because that's how you really get your value out of them for your downrange trajectories. If you just zero at 200 or 250, out to most hunting distances, three, 400 yards, there's not going to be an inch or two difference in the trajectories or even the wind deflections on most of these. So to really reach out and get their potential, I want to zero them for an eight inch diameter target that's roughly stuck to the, to the side of a deer going to hit all the vitals. You've got a little fudge factor even. So as long as you can keep your bullet inside of that eight inch circle, you aim for the center and you can shoot high at 100 yards, 150 yards, 170 yards, and then start dropping back down. As long as you don't go any more than four inches above your line of aim or your line of sight, you're not going to miss that eight inch target. 
And then as the bullet progresses downrange and it starts dropping more and more, when it reaches the bottom of that circle, you've reached your maximum point blank range. So zeroing is going to be different for every one of these bullets. The 7mm 08 Remington is zeroed for 265 yards and that gives it its maximum point blank range of 311 yards. Pretty good long reach for a dead on hold. On an 8 inch target, you're going to hit it. Now with the 7 rem mag, you can zero a little farther and then reach a little farther. Zero that one at 299 yards and you can reach 352 before it drops out of that 80 inch circle. Pretty nice. Now what about that 28 Nosler? That one's going to zero at 312 and reach 366. A little better than a 7 rem mag, but nothing incredible. But there's the differences for your drop trajectories. But let's look at the rest of the benefits we get from these bullets at these different velocities. Now remember, these are the same bullet every time. 150 grain. I think I used a Barnes TTSX 150 grain. That would be about a 0.42 ballistics coefficient. So that's consistent. And that will keep the wind deflections fairly similar, but the velocity is going to make a difference. So run down the uh, ranges, and of course you see at 300 yards, you're dropping almost three inches with the 7 millimeter 08, whereas the um, 7 rem mag barely drops at all because it's been zeroed at 299. And that 28 Nasser hits still a little more than a half inch high at 300 yards. But notice that 100 yards, None of them are more than about three inches high, just a little bit more, and there's no peak trajectory above four inches on any of them. That's keeping that in that eight inch diameter target zone, nice. But reaching out to the distances is where you really start to see the advantage to these faster cartridges. 400 yards, got 16 inches of drop in the 708 versus nine inches in the rim mag, and um, what do we got, only seven, seven and a quarter inches in that 28 nozzle. So you're beginning to see there's not a lot of difference between these two top enders, but the little 708 at the bottom, yeah, there starts to be a pretty significant difference. But you're probably not gonna use that one for extreme range shooting anyway. So go on down those distances and look at the windage, the energy, and then you start to see some difference, especially in the energy. The uh, seven rem mag is carrying out to 700 yards, a thousand foot pounds of energy, whereas the little 708 is down to 785. So if you wanna keep your energy or your impact energies at a thousand foot pounds, you probably need to Stop at four or 500 yards. You don't want to reach out too far with those smaller seven millimeters, but the bigger ones can do it. Look at that 28. It's carrying uh, all the way to 800 yards and you've got a little over 1,000 foot pounds. I'm not saying that you need more than 1,000 foot pounds to terminate a deer or even an elk, but a lot of people use this as a benchmark. 1,000 for a deer sized animal and 1,500 foot pounds for an elk sized animal. But of course, plenty of elk have have died when they were hit with bullets with a lot less energy than that. But something you use for a benchmark. <clears throat> of course, at extreme range, 1,000 yards, huge differences. 346 inches of drop for the 708 and only 246 for the 7 rem mag and only 219 for that 28 Nosler. And uh, the wind deflections, you know, they're not too bad, but still, if you're going from, say, an 85 or 86 inches of windage with the 28 Nosler, and you go down to that 7 millimeter 08, and now you have 111 inches, that's a pretty significant difference there. That's easily missing or wounding an animal. But I don't recommend anybody shoot at 1,000 yards for an animal anyway. You know, 500 is probably maximum. Even though back in Jack O'Connor's day, they were shooting animals at 500 yards with their 270s and such. But these days with laser range finders, we can really nail down that distance and become precise. You get a scope that's got the usual corrections on it and you can drop them right in there, except for that wind deflection. So at 500 yards, if you're looking at the wind blowing your bullet 22 inches on that 708, that's a lot of movement, almost two feet. Now, the advantage of having that faster, bigger 28 nozzle or the seven rim mag is you cut that down. Again, it's the same bullet, but because of the increased velocity, you're cutting that windage down quite a bit. So, those are the things to consider. And as I always say, if you're the average hunter, 
for the kind of hunter who does not believe in extreme range shooting and you try to keep your shots inside of 300, 400 yards, you're going to do just fine with this little 7 millimeter 08. So if you don't want to put up with the recoil or the throat burning in your barrels or any of the other downsides of those Magnum cartridges, don't be afraid of those smaller 7 millimeters. They'll do the job. And I've done it myself, so I can vouch for it, but it certainly works. But still, I think that good all-around middle of the pack, 280, 280 AI, or the 7 rem mag, somewhere in there, pretty good little option. So I wouldn't be afraid of uh, hunting pretty much anything in North America with any of these 7 millimeters. It's a great all-around cartridge and diameter for a bullet. And you get to the bigger bullets, and then you start talking about ballistics coefficient advantages. Some people will say, oh, I shoot a 7 millimeter, so I got the best BC. <laughs> no, that's the cartridge you're talking about. The bullet is what is rated as a BC. So look at this little guy. Flat base, 130 grain, 7 millimeter bullet. Great for deer hunting at closer ranges, and it's easy to drive it at high velocities because it's so light, but the ballistics coefficient on it, nothing to write home about. So don't let the ballistics coefficient argument sway you until you check the individual bullets. Those are the sevens. Now, as I've already shown you, you can have something super light and compact like this little guy. 22 inch barrel, weighs under five pounds. It is so easy to carry. And this thing will shoot right at about one minute of angle to one and a quarter. And I have taken game out to 450 yards with this. Sheep and goats and uh, coos deer down in Arizona. Beautifully accurate rifle for hunting. I'm not gonna win any bench rest competitions with it, but it's so easy to carry and use that I absolutely love it. 284, I mostly shoot 139 grain, 140 grain to 150 grain bullets in it. And I have taken elk with it. Don't think I've taken a moose with it. But at the other extreme is this big guy. This is a custom Remington. And it's kind of the tricked out longish range rifle that kids like these days and some of the older guys. Anybody who likes to shoot long and precisely, you've got a much longer barrel on it, so you're gonna wring some more velocity out of it. It's got a muzzle brake to control the recoil. It's got a straight grip. It's got the swells in the grip. So it's really tricked out for precision shooting, especially with a bipod mounted on it or sandbags. Fairly flat underneath on this McMillan stock, but it's still comfortable enough in your hands that you can easily swing it this way. But as you can see, this scope is a Z8 Isorowski, three and a half to 28 by 50. I mean, this is a monster scope and you can dial it way out there. It's got all the long range stuff if you don't mind carrying around a big rifle. You could obviously chamber something like this in these big guys too. And a heavy rifle is gonna help that way because moderate your recoil. Felt recoil is a big deal. You can see here, I've got a little pad on it to get my eye up there so I can see through that scope. One of the other issues you have, if you get your comb too high, the bolt hits it and that's not gonna work. So you can put this aftermarket stuff on and tailor it by putting shims underneath it to get your eye right in the scope. And I can just squeeze right down on this, get a great cheek weld and I'm looking right down the scope. But it's not a rifle I'd wanna carry up in the mountains for sheep or even elk. Uh, great out on the flats if you're not going too far or you're sitting in a blind watching something. Then those kind of big heavy rifles are wonderful. But for roaming around uh, climbing mountains, I like the lightweights. But chambering in any seven millimeter bigger than this little stump, <laughs> you're gonna be able to do the job. Just be careful about choosing your bullets. Use the right bullet for the job because it's the bullet that does all the work. You know, we get all excited about velocities and ballistics coefficients and all the precision shooting things. And that's wonderful. But once your bullet gets there, what's it going to do? It's going to break up. Is it going to penetrate deeply enough? There's a whole nother program that you've got to pay a lot of attention to. There's no sense in choosing a bullet that has wonderful ballistics coefficient and is really accurate, but can't terminate that animal. Terminal performance is kind of the bottom line. So consider all of those things, but don't be afraid to choose a seven millimeter for your all around rifle because it really can handle everything if you do your job. Hey, thanks for watching. I'm Ron Spomer and I invite you to become a Patreon if you could. Uh, 
Ron's Boomer's Patreons help us produce these videos, and we really thank you for that, everyone who's a Patreon member. And you can catch us on Instagram and Facebook sometimes. We like to put a lot of little photos out there and things just to stir things up a little bit. We have ronspomeroutdoors.com, which is our website where we cover a lot of these things in more detail. You can take your time reading on there. And uh, you can find us in uh, several of the outdoor magazines that are still being printed. I urge you to do that. It'd be a shame to see our good old hunting and fishing magazines go the way of the dinosaur. But a lot of them are having trouble in this day and age because everybody watches videos for free and gets online. But there's a lot of good detailed information in those hunting publications. Sporting Classics, Sports the Field, American Hunter. There's just a lot of great titles still out there. And I'd love for you to subscribe to some of those and check them out because with a magazine, you know, you can sit down someplace where you might want to be uh, in private for a while and enjoy a read. And you can take your time doing it and the batteries never run out. So check us out on some of those publications as well. In the meantime, this is Ron Smomer inviting everybody to hunt, honest, and shoot straight. Thanks. Mm -hmm.